Hi, welcome to the Enterprise 2.0 Workbench Episode 4. My name is John Brunswick and today we're going to be taking a look at building an extension in Google Chrome to search Universal Content Management. We're going to be getting this done using two key technical elements. The first being HTML5's local storage capability to store the URL to our content server. The second being the JSON characteristics of the Universal Content Management System. As we interact with it, our extension allows an end user to search against the system. The response coming back from Universal Content Management will be in JSON notation in which we paint back into the extension and provide end users with a couple links to get to the actual content. So that being said, download the sample code and let's start our walkthrough. To get an understanding of how this extension was created, we'll take a look at four sections of the development. We'll review the extension in action, take a look at the architecture that underlies the extension, look at the directory structure and actual files involved in creating the extension, and then just talk about using the extensions in general in Chrome. So the first thing you'll notice, I'm using Google Chrome, and in the upper right hand corner, I have a series of icons, each related to a particular extension that I'm running. The last icon in the toolbar with the red Oracle O is our custom extension, and if we click it, it's going to bring up a dialog indicating that it is the Oracle UCM search, and it's telling us that we need to set up our server location in order to use it. So behind the scenes, it's actually checking a value using HTML5 local storage, and if there's no value there, it's going to display this message and then allow us to set the preference. So let's go ahead and set the preference. Behind the scenes, when I click the button, it actually took me to a new web page, but it's just housed within this dialog that's provided by the extension framework. We're going to go ahead and enter a path to our content server. And we're going to hit save. Now, everything that's happening here, including the confirmation dialog, is all being powered by jQuery and a bunch of Ajax uh, enabled posts to the to the JavaScript files that are interacting with that HTML5 local storage. Let's go back to our search and now you'll notice this time it has actually brought up a proper search dialog. So we have an area where we can enter some text. We also have a wrench that indicates that we can head back to the preferences and update this path if we want to. So let's go ahead and let's execute a search. I'm going to search for the word Avatech and when I execute the search, behind the scenes it actually fired a query against UCM and it's brought back the results using JSON notation and done a nice job of formatting them in the user interface here. So you'll notice that if I click on the various section headings, it'll even go ahead and sort them and that's taken care of by a jQuery plugin that we're leveraging that allows us to sort the table. So within the body of the table, we've been able to access the standard attributes with a UCM content item. And you'll notice that on the left hand side, we have a link. If we click the link, it's actually going to open up the file that is associated with that content item. And we also have the traditional Oracle UCM uh, information button. So for instance, if we take a look at, let's find a good example, if we take a look at a knowledge base HTML piece that was created by the user Bob and hit the information button, it's actually going to take us into content server showing us all the details for that content item. So all in all, it's a very simple example of how we're using, how we're using the Chrome extensions to interface with some of the web services, and I use that term generically, that Oracle UCM is providing us. And it's just, uh, again, an example that proves out some nice basic concepts that you could take then and extend onto your own samples. So architecturally, there is a link that I'll include in the post that goes over the overview for a Chrome extension, but fundamentally, Everything that we do is really using web pages. There are only two components 
that are mandatory, a manifest file and one or more HTML files. So I think Google's done a great job in not going ahead and building some new technology to do this, but using standard web technologies to enable all of this. The other thing that's maybe a little bit unique, there's a concept of a background page. And um, what this enables people to do, if you have multiple tabs open or some sort of ongoing process, it allows you to communicate into that ongoing process. And so you'll notice when we start to look through the files in a moment, we have a background page, and that background page is actually responsible for brokering some of the communication with taking care of the server name preference that we set in our dialog. So uh, the Chrome extensions make a distinction between what are called content scripts, which are um, also sometimes termed content pages, and again, that background process page that is ongoing and can persist, um, you know, persist various things throughout somebody's time leveraging an extension. So let's take a look at the directory that actually comprised the extension. And if we take a look at it, it's very similar to pretty much any web project that you would work with regardless of a particular platform. We have a series of HTML files. And in our example, we used a search HTML file, which provided the search interface. We had an options HTML file, which allowed us to store our server path. And we had a background HTML file that allowed us to work with the information that we were storing for the path. Beyond that, we have some, again, very straightforward standard web development type of directories. We have a style directory, an image directory, and a JavaScript directory. And within each one, we have files that are no different than if you use them on a public.com versus within an extension. So where, where do things get a little bit different? Well, the first place that they get different is within this JSON file that is the manifest file. And if we take a look at the manifest file, if you're used to packaging applications on using other technologies, you find something very similar. We have an opportunity to set the name, version, description, icons, and various other information about our extension. The one area that's going to be new for people is going to be the permissions area. So for every extension that is running inside Google Chrome, it can have a finite set of permissions and it starts with being as restrictive as possible by default, but then letting people define you know, what URLs can somebody's extension call out to, can it manipulate the tabs in the Chrome UI, and you define all of that here. So, for instance, you can see that in the permissions area, we've enabled this to call out to any sort of web service. And the reason that I set this up this way, if you're gonna leverage this plugin within your organization, you will have your own paths that you might want to include to potentially lock this down. So moving on from the manifest file, let's take a look at the search uh, HTML file. And what you'll find with the search HTML file is it is going to look identical to anything that you're probably doing with other web technologies today, just meaning that when you look through it, it is using the HTML5 document structure. But in, when you deal with cascading style sheets, JavaScripting, it's all very standard. And as we you know, browse through, I've included some functions to manipulate the body of the page um, you know, as somebody uses it that are in no way really doing anything specific for a Chrome extension with the exception of getting the server preference that we're going to be um, going over in a moment that was set in the options page. So if we take a look here, when the page loads up, I have a series of functions that dictate whether a dialog should be shown to alert the user that they need to enter a server path or just going ahead and showing the search option. Okay. And so as we as we scroll into the very kind of core of the body, you'll notice that again this code is very, very standard, where here was the one um, message that we presented to users who didn't have anything stored in the HTML5 local storage. Whereas here we, um, we have an opportunity for them to revisit the preferences at any point. And so that wrench icon that we saw before in the user interface, that is all powered um, by the markup that we're looking here within this page. Now, 
Where it does get, uh, I should say, com complicated is when we actually make the call to UCM. But thankfully, Bexaf has a really nice jQuery extension, which makes it very, very easy to fire a search or really execute any service within UCM by way of this jQuery extension that he has developed. So the great part when we deal with painting our results back into the page when the search is executed, that is done in, a, in such a way that we actually have an object to work with as we go ahead and grab attributes from a particular element in the result set. So if we look at the row object here, we can go straight to attributes that are very common with universal content management. Um, and for those who haven't done it before, if you're working within Content Server, and we'll search for Avatech here as we did before, when the results page comes up, um, this page itself, if we open this page inside a new, a new frame, let me see if I can easily just uh, grab that. Hold on a second. What we can do is we can actually take a look at any sort of markup related to the UI that we're looking at. And this is not um, necessarily an appropriate example. We want to look at the frame in which the search query was fired in. Hold on a second. I'll show that in Firefox. It's a little bit faster just to get to the area where we can examine that URL. But that's where we are able to set up that JSON formatting that's going to come back with our search results. So let's do this. If I'm... Uh...